the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. In today's Gospel, there are four parties. There's the Lord, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ, of course. There is the young man who is being healed. There are the four friends that the young man has who have brought him to the Lord. And then there is fourth, uh, those who were gathered about, the spectators. I'm going to talk just about one line because I've spoken about this before and well this is my 34th year as a priest so I've spoken about it <laughs> a few times. Um, but it's written that the power of the Lord was present to heal. Okay, I ask you, when was the power of the Lord not present to heal? And the answer is, it was always, at every time, it was always present to heal. Always. So why does it say, was present to heal? Because first you have to recognize Jesus as your Lord. And people were offended at that because he looked like a man. He looked ordinary. There are some people that have postulated that if you saw St. Mary and St. Joseph and Jesus in the carpenter's area where they were, that you would not, you would not distinguish them from any other people in the city, that they looked exactly like everybody else. And, and, and again, one of the reasons that they have this meditation is because suppose Jesus came and he was seven feet tall and he weighed 300 pounds and his skin was like gold and his eyes were bright like sapphires and his lips were red like rubies and he had the strength of 10 Samsons. People would say, well, who can be like this? But if he comes as an ordinary human being, an ordinary human being, people will find him more approachable. Think about this in your own life. I've had professors who had distinguished reputations in the university. And some of them, they liked that very, very much. And when you would go to speak with them, they would act as though you were really imposing upon them because they wanted, again, to reinforce in you and perhaps for themselves even, their own dignity. And Jesus came very humbly. And that was offensive to people who wanted a hero to lead them out. A particular type of hero, though, was the problem. They were looking for a certain thing. The power of God is always able and it is always imminent. That means it is in, in every situation. Um, when I was in the Church of St. George, you know when you're in a big church, uh, a person goes to the old priest, and if they don't find satisfaction with the old priest, they go down stair steps till they find the youngest priest or the priest with the least experience or the priest they think is going to be able to solve their problem because all these old people they just didn't know anything it's the power of the lord that heals in any situation i can tell you in this church alone we have many people who and we're a small church, we're only about a hundred people. But we have many people who will not let go of anger. They're angry with somebody. Somebody did something to me. They did something. They really did. It, 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 that is something that can't be denied. 
but they won't let go. And you know, one of the most horrible prayers that we pray, and I'm careful about saying this, the most horrible prayer that we pray, or one of them, is the Lord's Prayer. Because we say, forgive me as I forgive. Now, if the Lord is always able to heal and, 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 and if he is always present in, 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 in the least priest, in me, if the Lord is present in me and I have the power to heal, his power, just as when I call down the the Holy Spirit upon the wine and the water and the bread, and they become the body and the blood of God. That power, the power of the Holy Spirit, which we commemorate in the lives of the holy apostles. When I have this power and I come into a place, I used to come to the front door when I knew people were fighting and I say, the only thing that I have with me is the Bible and the cross. Would you like me to come in? I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a sociologist, I'm not a cultural anthropologist. And everyone wants to tell me this really long story. It's always the same story, by the way, at least the telling of the story. You know, it's kind of like if you watch a hundred cowboy westerns in a row, after a while you figure out the bad guys wear the black hats and the good guys wear the white hats. It's the same narrative and how they were hurt and how it was unfair. And they hang on to that as though it were the most precious gem. Because it gives reason for them to behave as they want to behave. I know a man that sold a store to his brother. And after he sold a store to his brother, his brother said, you cheated me. And they had a big fight and the family split and it's been split for 25 years. It'll never, it'll never be resolved because they don't forgive. Now the power of the Lord is there to heal. The power of the Lord is there to make brothers love again, but they won't accept it. It's like the Jews were sitting back and said, huh, who can forgive sins? Hmm, that's an easy thing to say. We have no proof that it's taken place. We don't know that. And the Lord said, oh, okay. You want something manifest in front of you because the only thing that you see is what is physical in nature. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Now the fathers of the church, when the Lord addresses this young man, and certainly, the Lord knows every one of our needs, so he doesn't have to call him man. And I looked this up in, in the Greek to find out if, if it's really man or if it's some other kind of a thing, but it's anthropos or anthrope, to be exact. So he refers to mankind as being unwilling and unyielding to let go of something. But if you don't, think of the jeopardy that you are in every time you say with your own lips, forgive me as I forgive others. And the Lord says, okay, as you have said to these two brothers who had the store between them in the fight, huh? you don't forgive your brother, I shall not forgive you either. You see, don't count on the mercy of the Lord. Do not count on the mercy, count on the truth. And when the Lord says, I have given you this, meaning the church, and I have given you the priesthood, meaning the popes, the bishops, the uh, priests, to reconcile. When we come into the church, it's one of the first prayers that we pray. First, we give thanks to God for him having given us this. So we pray the prayer of thanksgiving. But we're going to pray soon after this sermon, the prayer of reconciliation. 
to be reconciled to God. But to be reconciled to God can't take place until we are reconciled with one another. And people hang on to this forever. I can tell you story after story after story. And every time I say, pray for the person who hurt you. Pray for the person who hurt you. Because what you are really doing in this, and I, I don't mean to give away one of my priestly secrets, you're praying for yourself. When you are praying for the person who hurt you, you are praying for yourself. Because in order for you to want the good of someone else, you have to first have a plenitude of good so that you may give it. You know, if, if we're sitting around two hungry guys and we don't know what to do, I can't give my friend anything to eat. But if we're in my house, I've got some poor food that my wife made. I mean, I've got some food and I can share with him. Um, but from the heart, from the heart, we store up treasures the more that we interact with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there's another thing, and this is a condemnation for almost all of you. Do you really have, not for acquaintances, do you have four friends? Do you have four friends in this world? Four friends that will go out of their way at the drop of the hat? Most of you don't. I tell this to women who confess to me all the time. You must have girlfriends. You must, you must have this for a variety of reasons that I'll not go into now. And for you guys, you must have male friends. You must. If you don't have four friends, who's going to take care of you in time of trouble? As this young man. He took four. No. What I'm trying to say is that in, in this narrative that we have here, there are a lot of things that impose a reflection of our life upon the scripture. Do we have good friends? I told you this, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, I had one friend in my life in the church who when we got together, the first thing he said, can we open the Bible together? Only one. You know, I've always been kind of uh, ashamed to just go in and start to do something like that because of sanctimony. Sanctimony means that you are trying to show that you have holiness. And it's the assumption that, okay, I'm going to share this with you, but really I'm going to teach you. And the fear is that people are going to resent it. So I, I speak about things um, with um, a, a few of my brothers in the priesthood, but I don't go generally, and, and I didn't when I was a deacon. And as I reflect on that, I think, you know, that's bad because now after having been in the church for some time, I, I realize how precious this one person was in his attitude because he wasn't worried that I might be offended by him saying it, or that I might call him sanctimonious, or that any other thing might arise in my mind that would be competitive. But just, can we open up the Bible? Or I was reading this. Uh, Abuna Antonio Sanian of Blessed Memory used to start out when he would send um, messages on uh, theotokos.org. He would say, I was reading this today. He would start off by saying, I was reading this today. Not, you should read this. <laughs> this will be good for you. You know, you really have a lot of problems. Take this as medicine. No, he said, I was reading this today. He would start off that way. So there's ways to do it. You know, sometimes it's, it's, it's not always that you are unwilling to do a holy thing, but you haven't been taught. 
Do you know that in the entire time that I was in, 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 in service, hardly anybody ever visited me that was a priest? I'm talking about um, we had two visits in like eight years. <laughs> right? Two visits in eight years. So, so what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that I, me being an American, not having any roots in the Egyptian community at all, I needed a lot. I needed so much. But it was as though I was asking for gold or something. You know, nobody would show up. So we can't do that now. You might be one of those four friends of somebody. You know, now we have a TV program, it's called Intervention. And if somebody's really going bad because of alcohol or drugs, they have an intervention. But the interventions should take place spiritually. They should, people should come and gather around one another's homes, centered in the Bible, or centered in a book that is an exposition of the Bible that is kind of hard to understand without that book. We have the sayings of the fathers and they're great. But remember, the Lord is always present to heal. He is always present. Is there a time that God is not here everywhere? This is called eminence. Eminence, Emmanio from the Latin. And it, it means he is inherent in everything. In every breath that we take, the Lord is present. So use that to heal, to heal others, to heal yourself, and to be perhaps the one who conveys a person who is broken to the Lord himself so that he may become whole. Glory be to our God, both now and ever, and the age of all things. Amen.